And so he softens you up with all this talk about self-acceptance. And what we've learned from meeting with people who know him personally is he, he didn't really practice this himself. But let's talk about what the teachings actually are. And this may be kind of a tough question to ask you to do it this succinctly, but if you could pick like the maybe three to five major points that would summarize the basic teachings of Gothardism, you know, what would those points be? Because I do know that a lot of the teaching had to do with the family, right? And the roles, like gender roles. And so for a lot of people who might be complementarian, they're they're attracted to this because they're thinking, oh, this is good. This is traditional family values and and gender roles. But it went beyond that a little bit from my understanding. So so well, talk, Don, you can start with, you know, what were the teachings that we would need to be aware of that were maybe the most unbiblical ones that kind of hallmarked this movement? Okay, he starts you off the very first night with what he calls the seven non-optional principles of life. Now, that's key because they're non-optional. In other words, you don't have an option. They're non-optional. Right. Although many people think that they are. They're, he tells you they're not. Uh, and they are uh, design. Thank God for your design and the foundation of genuine self-acceptance. Number two is authority. This is key number one key to everything else that he does, authority. Uh, mm -hmm. Responsibility is three. Suffering is four. Ownership is five. Freedom is six. Seven is success. On the surface, they sound okay until you start understanding what he's saying in them. So authority is, on the first night, he tells you that authority is a key element. And to tell you that, then, he goes to a biblical story of Jesus and the Roman centurion uh, and tells you that this is a teaching about authority, right? The centurion's uh, servant is sick. He goes to Jesus, asks Jesus to heal him. Jesus says, good, I'll come over to your house. And he goes, oh, no, I too am a man under authority. I say, go do this, and they go do it. I go do that, go do it. Uh, and so from that, we get this idea of an umbrella of protection. If you stay under the umbrella of protection, which is your pastor, father, uh, whatever male headship it is, then you're protected, he tells you. So, you know, your car is not going to break down. You're going to have a good job, hot wife, hot husband, whatever. Stay under the umbrella of authority. You won't get acne. Your kids will be well behaved and it'll be great. But if you get out from under this umbrella of protection, then you are in rebellion, and rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. So we go back and we deal with this. We go, okay, well, is number one, is this a story about authority or something else? And what we discover is it's a teaching about Jesus. It's not about authority. It's about power. Who has power? Jesus has power. And because he has power and because he's God, he doesn't have to go to the house because he could just speak and the servant will be healed. It's a story about who Jesus is. It's not a story about umbrellas of protection. But you're in there shaking your head, filling out your little forms, and you bought it. Next, you have a definition of getting out from under the umbrella of protection, which I mentioned, is getting out from under the umbrella of protection is rebellion, and rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. So you are safe as long as you Alicia, stay under the headship of your husband, but if you get out from under that headship, all manner of evil might befall you. That's okay. a lot of fear. That's a lot of fear. Well, you know, one thing I would like to say, Don, uh, yes. looking right at the basic textbook, the basic seminar textbook, um, and he's he, he kind of sneaks up on you with the authority teaching. That is his first most important foundational principle. But in the basic seminar, before he gets to that, he has this whole chapter on the acceptance of self. And he talks about uh, forming attitudes about yourselves, evidences of self-rejection, basic insights on self-acceptance. Uh, you know, and this kind of softens up the audience. Mm. Kind of like it's it's a soft, cushy feeling, and you know this this comes right on the heels of Philip Reeves' book uh, in 1966, "The Triumph of the Therapeutic," 
you know, so we're, we're, we've entered into this therapeutic age. Uh, and Gothard, you know, this is, he's pretty savvy to this. You know, he, he understands that people are, we're talking in, in either Freudian, Jungian, or Ericksonian terms about relationships now in, in going into the 1970s. And he, he, he parlays this, you know, he, he uses this in his teaching to kind of, because authority, uh, this is the same time when I'm in school and my teachers are warning us about authority. Look what happened in Germany. Mm. Look what happened about, you know, look at all these guys who said we were only following orders. So how do you soften up an audience? Because you're about to give them something that's kind of going against the grain of what's being put into the educational system in the 1970s. It's going against the grain of what's happening on college campuses. Of course, that's why a lot of the parents are there, you know, because they are they don't want their kids joining the SDS or the Yippies or, you know, they don't want to see them in the news, you know. Yeah. Um, and so he softens you up with all this talk about self-acceptance. And what we've learned from meeting with people who know him personally is he, he didn't really practice this himself. He, to this right. day, this 90 year old guy, almost 89, he's got dark hair. Do you see my hair? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not 90. This hair has been like this for a while. Uh, he wears lifts in his shoes because he is kind of short. So, you know, he talks about self-acceptance, accepting the way God made you, and he doesn't practice it. So back to you, Don. Okay. <laughs> That's what I have to so say. Have the authority established, getting out from under the of authority is uh, rebellion. Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. And then he does this other interesting thing as the night goes on, is he turns to Jesus as a child and says the only story we have of Jesus uh, is at the age of 12, and he remained behind. Uh, when his parents left Jerusalem and he remained behind in a temple and they came back and frantically were looking for him. And then he says, this is an amazing thing. Mm. Jesus had to make the tough decision to get back under his parents' umbrella of protection. Now think about what that means. If you get up from under the umbrella, you are in rebellion. Rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. One. Two. Jesus had to make the tough decision to get back under his parents' umbrella of protection, which means what? He was out from under it to begin with. Oh, wow, yeah. And the first time we met with him, when I raised this up, there was uh, my pastor, Ron, uh, and two others were, were with us the first time we met with him. And I raised this thing. I walked him through. Here's what you teach in the first hour. Yes. Here's what you say about Jesus. Yes. And I said, okay, so if Jesus had to make the tough decision to get back under the parents' umbrella protection, that necessarily means he was out from under it to begin with. Doesn't that mean he's a sinner and therefore cannot be our savior? How does that work? What did he say? What he said, Don. What did he say? Something like, oh, we would never say that, of course. Oh, no, he didn't say that. He, he thought about it and he did his look up into the left corner of the room. And he finally said, because they said, either your teaching is wrong or Jesus is a sinner. He said, no, my teaching is right and Jesus isn't a sinner. But he couldn't tell us how that works. Right. Wow. Another thing he teaches is that circumcision is a moral requirement. And I suggested that there's a small book in the New Testament he might be interested in reading called Galatians. Galatians, that yeah. With this issue. <laughs> wow. So yeah. it's been an interest. So those, you know, those are some of the big things. Authority being number one, he lives in what we would call a patriocentric teaching. The, the patriocentric are essentially property of the male head of the family. Mm -hmm.